Hey guys, if you're looking for help with your Amazon business in terms of troubleshooting or strategy, visit sellersessions.com forward slash consultancy or drop me a message to danny at sellersessions.com. Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Again, I bring back Sean Smith. Hey Sean, how you doing? I'm good, Danny. Thanks for having me again, man. Really, really appreciate it. So let's see uh, where you are with the, uh, the review score thing. You know, in terms of the effect on re- review score, we have it common in the agency. You know, it's once you hit that dreaded 3.5 in some categories, yeah. it could be as low as 4.1 and um, you get bombed out the market. I've noticed that quite a lot in uh, categories such as electronics and stuff or shiny objects where people really take reviews to heart, you know. So what have you yep. been seeing? Yeah, um, we've seen it consistently over the past couple of years is um, with, with uh, you know, the businesses that we work with. When, when we see that the stars drop, ACOS goes up because the PPC conversion rate goes down and it's kind of like a spiraling effect. And so like it's, it's all about damage control. So like, for example, when you go from like four to 3.5 and just keep in mind everyone that like the effectiveness of your review score is relative to the offers that are around you. But generally, ideally, we like to see 4.5 or better when we work with people. Four is okay as well. And it's, it is really relative to the market because we have been in situations where people have low scores and they do well. But whenever the, whenever we see the reviews drop, like it's, dude, it's, it's like clockwork, man. We see it every time. And I always have to, you know, we always talk about it. It's just like, we go from like four to 3.5. And then what happens is we see the, the PPC conversion rate trail down and then the A costs go up and then we have to do like damage control. And so like, there's kind of two paths, right? There's path. Number one is like, do we want to pull back on the PPC? Like, you know, drop things and uh, you know, pull back on the ACOS or do we want to keep pushing until we get that four? And so what we usually do is we like to calculate, like it's, it's a forecast, right? Forecasts aren't permanent, but like usually we'll work with the business and be like, Hey, when do you think we can get back to that, you know, higher rating? And then we calculate the, the amount of time it might take, right? So is it going to be a week or two? And then we determine, we create a plan like, hey, should we decrease the bids? We actually have never been in that situation. For the most part, we just leave it as is. And even though the A cost is high, because even if it's for two weeks or three weeks, you, you have to think, storm. what's up? You ride the storm. We ride the storm because think about it. Two weeks compared to like, let's say a business has been open for like a year. You know, it's one twenty fourth of a year. And so like, it's not really that long in terms of the business. And even if we have clients that have been around for like several years, you know, it's only two weeks out of however many several years the product has been live. So we like to ride the storm until they get those four back. But it's just something that like, you know, uh, business, Amazon business owners have to like keep their eyes out for and just, it's, it's fundamental. But like, I feel like sometimes as you scale and as you get bigger and bigger, sometimes you forget the fundamentals. And yeah. so- you always have to keep in mind the fundamentals of, of selling on Amazon. Yeah, I mean, we have the same thing. When you've got accounts with hundreds, if not thousands of SKUs, there's a, there's a balancing act. Normally with larger SKU sets, it's not as impactful um, because how broad they are across all the different variations. Yeah. Um, but it still does have an impact, and you need to source those out and why there is a drop. And that's the manual side of you know, like when we sit down and do a strategy call with a client, like say, for instance, certain SKUs are not performing, we do a breakdown. We look at them. Are they still indexed? Why are they not performing? What's the review score? What's the strategy to deal with those? And that's where you start to isolate out stuff, which obviously software can't do. It needs that critical eye from a human. And it's the same when we take on clients as well. Quite often where you've got, say, bigger accounts, yep, they may have loads of SKUs, but you've got a series of like where they've got a handful of reviews and they yeah. might be low. There might be a three or so a free star. And it, it kind of wrecks those uh, at the very beginning. And we always say, look, we're not able to take you on. And t- because for us, if we were to take you on, then we'll get hit with the shit stick basically. If yeah. These don't perform. So we always say to the guys, look, there's a chunk here, go away, rework your review strategy, look at your product, product quality control, look into why these are, because most of this problem comes down to QC. Put all this back together. Quality control, yep. Yeah, you know, like dealing with the factory, you know, returns, all of those things generally is what feeds in. And one of the common things I've found the client, not on board, but clients that are, you know, 
uh, reach out to us, you know, about, and we do like an account audit and stuff. I find it quite common that people are not doing inspections, which I think is absolutely crazy. But, yeah. but they've got into a process where they've got a great relationship with their factory. And so they don't feel the need to, to do inspections, right? Yep. But the problem you've got is because they've got that relationship and they trust them, no one's looking at thousands of units that are arriving with percentage yeah. that are damaged. So what's happening is your returns are going up, yep. but you feel bad now because you feel like um, you don't trust your factory, for instance, by putting a QC team involved yep. and going in and doing the proper inspections and, and, and following that protocol. So it's, it's very interesting. But it, yeah, like I said, I think most of the things come back to where we're talking about the review score is generally down to quality control mismanaged quality control yep okay um so ppc to organic ratio yeah yeah so this is a cool one like i, I posted this on uh, facebook and linkedin about like the ppc to organic ratio and it was just kind of like a chart showing the life cycle of like for a product launch and i got confirmation from uh um someone uh that i met daniel tejada he works over at quiver and we kind of talked about this and we agree on this as well like when you do product launches kind of what happens is there's kind of like this, um, it's really interesting. It's like a graph where like in the beginning it spikes up and then it trails down over time. So like PPC to organic ratio is one of those ratios that you have to measure because it, it, it measures the quality of the organic performance of your product. And so we're seeing that like in the beginning when you're launching a product, you know, generally like 70 to 90% of your sales are going to come from PPC. Maybe even yeah. more sometimes. Or, or if not, 100. Especially if you're going, yeah. if you're doing like a, a protocol that I use, doing an exact match only, yeah. and you're going after the main keywords, that's exactly. all your sale is going to be because you've got no history on, on the, addition, the initial product. You're at the bottom of the Amazon jungle. No one's going to see it unless I run PPC or done some giveaways. And so yeah. 100% for me starts on products like that when you're doing the exact match at the very beginning and then you taper off over time. So you might do a 10 week period. You might take a product from the bottom of the Amazon jungle to top <laughs> five, but you might spend thousands of pounds for instance, or dollars on that key. Yeah. And then over a period of time, you start to see that drop off. Like you're saying is like, it goes 98%, 95%, 90%, yep. 85 and slowly, but surely it starts to come over and you start to taper off on your bids as your organic start to take over you know, you start to square that off and then you can reduce your ACOS over time. Yep. And we always say like, I mean, it really depends. Like a lot of people have their different philosophies on how much I know, like some, like one aggressive business I work with, they keep it at like 50% um, for their business. Some people at like 30, 20, 10. I mean, you know, it's, it's a tricky balance. You have to figure out one, which one works best for your business. In more competitive markets, you might have to keep it higher, but you have to watch that over time and see how it changes so that you can see and get a baseline, right? Like the way that like analysis works is you have to get a baseline of, of how it's performing to even understand realistically if you can get to a certain point. So I think like, you know, 10 to 50%, I mean, dude, it really depends, but like you need, it shouldn't be a hundred percent all the time. It should be trailing down over time, that percentage, because yeah. you should be getting, I mean, right. Like Amazon treats organic sales and paid sales pretty similarly. Uh, that's why you get the rank for it. And so if you're getting organic rank from the paid sales, then the, the dependency on paid should trail down over time. And then organic, since organics, you know, free, it's like free, free sales, I guess you could say, um, whenever you, you know, get those ranks, then, you know, you'll be more profitable from that standpoint. But that's what's it. it that's kind of like what you should look for when you're launching products, especially like you said, Danny, if you're only using PPC to launch like a hundred percent, you're going to come from that. Cause you, you're not doing the giveaways or, or external well, then, traffic. Let's look at some of the key points where things go wrong, where, you know, you, people burn in PPC. Sometimes oh, can. you, you can't, some products, it just, some categories, have got so much sales velocity it's almost impossible to achieve it all on ppc alone you know because it's just it's just too big you know imagine trying to do ppc only on a category where it's doing 250 units a day i yep. mean that's a lot to convert from the actual amount of uh searches into the click-through rate down into the purchase funnel 
and then yeah. the amount of sales that you need to sustain that is huge. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. And it's probably yeah. a more competitive market as well. Like well, usually see, that's what we're talking about because of the level yeah. of competitiveness of uh, the market, the chances are like you're fighting to get where you want to get in front. But yep. if you're not got the click through rates that leads into the conversions and you need a hefty number of sales and you're not appearing anywhere on that keyword and you want that level of visibility, there's always that struggle that people go on because instead of hitting 150 units a day, they might only be able to do 50, 60, 70 units that are always staying in the background. They're off page yeah. one. They're chasing yep. the dragon basically here. They're, 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 it's a pipe dream. They're just trying to get there. But that kind of tactic won't always work for every product because it's all going to be dependent on how um, well that you can click your, you know, what is your conversion from your click to sales ratio? That's a really, really important metric. Yeah. And if your price is wrong, if your images are wrong, if your review score is low and it's not a five or something, that is going to have tremendous impact on the amount of clicks that go from clicks to conversions. Plus, well, like your ability to rank for a keyword and a certain page is really relative to the um, competitiveness of the offers under that SERP. Mm -hmm. So if it's really highly competitive, dude, you might not even be able to really get much. You know what I mean? Versus if it's really low competition, it's a lot easier to stick. Because yeah. even if you like, get, you know, you get to a certain rank, you have mm -hmm. to stick. So that means you have to maintain that. And if the offers are way more competitive, then once you decrease like spend, then it just, it goes back to where it was. It might be better overall, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's, it's, it's relativity. It's all, or it's like, yeah, it's like the theory of relativity, right? Like it's, everything's relative to the environment. And yeah. so like, you have to look at the competitiveness of the environment and offers around you and ask yourself the question, can I compete? <laughs> and if it's really competitive, PPC is going to be, if you just and it don't and it don't matter. We you know we can't turn water to wine. It's doing PPC is like if the product's not good enough, the market will tell you that, and no amount of PPC will save that. I've said that over and over. Um, I had an interesting one last week. Amazon kindly moved the product to a different subcategory, so it kindly was, moved it. Kindly <laughs> moved it. Without. <laughs> And then, you know, you just, you know, typical thing, you, you run through stuff in the morning, like, hold on, why is that not appearing in number three or number four it was? And then um, you're going, hold on, am I out of stock here with this? And then once I've done a deep dive, now one of the things I, I like using uh, is, and it's the same with some of the clients, a lot of, well, some of the clients have gotten, but I try and encourage more of them to use Seller Legend. And I'm not here to plug it. I'm not, I don't do affiliate stuff, but. I find that really good because it's got a change history. I'm sure there's other softwares that do this as well. So yeah. it shows you where uh, the listing elements has changed and the API in that updates twice a day. So oh, I worked cool. it out almost straight away going to listing change because I'm thinking, right, I'm in stock. I couldn't work it out at first. And what I realized I'd, had happened there, I'd put it in a relevant cate category, but it wasn't super, super relevant. Amazon moved it to the super, super relevant category. So all the work uh, that was done behind that, it went from number two in that subcategory to a different subcategory to position 299. Ooh. I was quite lucky on this listing because it's not always available, but yeah. I was able to, it was on a UK listing, I was able to move it back into the nodes. So yeah. Business as usual, like yeah. 20 hours later or so. But um, oh, you always wow. get those little scares. I mean, I don't have enough data on this with the category moves, but I see the impact on that. I'd like to see more data on this stuff. But um, I think one of the things is, is if you are going to go, you know, people try and go after the bestseller badge, you know, and they go after ridiculous yeah. categories. switch. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not as easy to do that now. And then there are manual things that Amazon are doing to make these changes. Like they've got editors on the marketplace, but yeah. I definitely think um, anyone thinking about going after the best seller badge, that's fine. But I think that a lot of your work is going to be tied to that subcat. Yeah. We saw one, uh, we were working with one Amazon business that got their, one of the, like their best product um, switch categories and then uh, sales decreased in half, man. Yeah. So the 30 day sales decreased in half. It was brutal, man. I mean, I felt so, so sorry for her. Cause like, you know, 
these people, you know, your Amazon business is your livelihood. And so, you know, when that happened, you know, tried to do sell support that didn't work. You, you, you sounds like you had better luck. So I had her escalate it to Jeff and uh, that ended up working out for her, which was really exciting. So category changes, man, you got to go straight to the, like, that's, that's mission critical, man, because especially if it's a top seller, yeah. um, cause you're losing so much money, man. And so like, it's just wild. And she lost keyword rank. A cost went up, ACOS went up and just everything just, man, it, it was a tough situation to get through. So, uh, yeah, cool. Right. So we wrap it here. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Cool. it. Anything you want to add before we go? Ah, uh, dude, guys, just be ready for Q4. Make sure you plan, you know, your, your, uh, everything and um, including like your PPC bid strategies and, um, the keywords that you want to bid on and making sure you save the before and after so that, you know, you can make those changes and then revert those changes. So don't use campaign manager to make changes. Use either bulk files or, or some type of software that can revert it back to where it was originally. Cause that's how you got to do it. That's a big one. Sounds good. How can people reach you? Uh, people can reach me just, uh, pbcamsaccelerator.com. Sounds good. Thanks, Sean. Guys, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you again in a few days. Take care.